The following video is split into three sections. The first presentation will describe how to successfully administer BLESS using a multi-access catheter or MAC. The second and third parts of the video will cover the stepwise approach to troubleshooting an acute decompensation post-surfactant delivery using the problem-solving steps with the Abita XL, VN500 ventilators respectively. Once the order has been placed, prepare for administration by following the quick guide for BLESS administration. Prepare appropriately sized mask. Neopup with pressures of 40 on 6 or to match the set peep on the ventilator if greater than 6 centimeters of water. Ensure the JR bagger is set up and ready to use. Suction catheter set up and ready to use. Ensure the surfactant is warmed to room temperature as per manufacturer's recommendations. Remember, Surfactant viscosity increases the longer it is warmed, which can potentially lead to complications. Check the expiry date. And thoroughly clean the top of the vial as per policy. Draw up the surfactant Make sure that you add one mil of air Adjust the ventilator settings as per the quick guide instructions. These instructions will vary depending on the ventilator in use. Prior to administering surfactant, increase the high pressure alarm to 40 centimeters of water pressure. Increase the ventilator frequency to 60 breaths per minute. Note the current PIP on volume target mode. Switch to pressure control ventilation using this PIP. Volume target is 4 to 5 mils per kilo. While on volume target mode, Increase ventilator high pressure alarm to 35 centimeters of water and ventilator frequency to 60 breaths per minute for surfactant administration. As with any medical procedure, perform hand hygiene and don PPE as per IPNC guidelines. Suction the baby prior to blessed delivery to remove any excess secretions that may interfere with the effectiveness of the medication. Prepare the correct medication dose to be administered over the correct number of aliquots as per clinical practice guidelines. Attach the syringe with the surfactant dose to the MAC catheter lure lock. You must ensure the cap or syringe is connected to avoid a leak. Place the white cap into a sterile package to maintain cleanliness. Replace the suction catheter with the MAC catheter into the endotracheal Y adapter.
determine the desired depth of the catheter by locating markings on the catheter and endotracheal tube to determine the depth of insertion. The catheter end should line up slightly higher than the distal end of the endotracheal tube. Advance the MAC to the appropriate depth. The number of the MAC should sit just above the corresponding number on the endotracheal tube. Deliver the first aliquot over two to three seconds. Promptly remove the MAC once the medication is delivered. Remember that the catheter will cause a partial to full blockage of the endotracheal tube, resulting in reduced ventilation. Assess the baby and ventilation. The FiO2 may need to be increased to maintain oxygen saturations between 90 to 95 percent. Allow a minimum recovery period of 40 to 60 seconds prior to the, de the delivery of the next aliquot. For subsequent aliquots, repeat the previous steps to effectively deliver the surfactant dose. Ensure the infant is assessed for oxygenation and ventilation between aliquots. If the infant becomes unstable any time during the procedure, such as the heart rate decreases to less than 100 beats per minute and or the SVO2 is less than 80%, consider emergency measures. As surfactant is administered, watch the ventilator flow waveform and tidal volume to determine ventilation. If ventilation is limited, as observed with minimal flow on the ventilator graph and or less than expected tidal volume delivery, after the MAC catheter is withdrawn from the endotracheal tube, increase the set PIP to 30 centimeters of water pressure and assess over 15 seconds. If ventilation reestablishes, wean the PIP for a tidal volume of 4 to 5 mils per kilo. If ventilation does not reestablish, increase the PIP to 35 centimeters of water and assess over 15 seconds. If ventilation reestablishes, wean the PIP for a goal volume of 4 to 5 mils per kilo. If ventilation does not re-establish, consider emergency measures. As surfactant is administered, watch ventilator flow waveform and tidal volume to determine ventilation. If ventilation is limited, as observed with minimal flow on the ventilator graph and or less than set tidal volume delivered, provide three manual breaths. If manual breaths do not reestablish effective ventilation, increase high pressure alarm to 40 centimeters of water. Provide three manual breaths. If ventilation is not re-established, disconnect from the ventilator and provide ventilation with the Neopuff resuscitator. Initial pressures should be 40 centimeters of water pressure on 6 centimeters of water pressure. If ventilation does not improve with the Neopuff, Increase peak inspiratory pressure to 45 centimeters of water pressure. 
Switching from the volume from volume targeted mode to the neopop to troubleshoot obstruction should occur within 20 to 30 seconds. If ventilation is not re-established on the neopop, consider emergency measures. Some possible early complications to the, the delivery of BLESS may include transient bradycardia and desaturations, obstruction, which will likely be in the major airways. Some late complications may be a pneumothorax and pulmonary hemorrhage.